Are you poor, middle class, or wealthy? I'm speaking today from experience. I've seen the full finances of literally thousands of people. Uh, now, everything I see here in this uh, in this video, of course, there's lots of exceptions to it, but these are all generally true of people that I know. Okay, what we're going to learn today is which of these are you? What's the definition? How do you know? Uh, how are the people in the different groups different from each other? And how can you become one of the wealthy? What do you need to do? So, now, there's a traditional view that this is all a matter of income, so high income and low income. And this is, you know, you may find ranges like this on the internet of, of who, who a lower and upper class are. Okay, But that's not really actually accurate. So wealth is all about net worth. It's not about income. Okay, So net worth is it's the value of everything you own. If you sold everything you own and pay everything, pay off everything you owe, that is your net worth. It's a financial number. It's not a personal value on you, but it's it's that's it's net worth, and that's really the definition of wealthy versus poor. Now, um, of course, high income is helpful, right? If you've got a lot, a lot of high income, it's very much easier to be wealthy. But it's but it's actually not not essential. So I've seen lots of low-income people that have good investments, especially there's this huge fire community now, of millions of people that have, you know, modest incomes, but save a lot and still have, have good income. And also high income, um, uh, we've seen also high income people with little or no wealth. Okay, so, or no, they're actually high spenders. They make lots of money and they spend it all. So it's not about wealth. It's uh, Wealth is about net worth, not about income. So, and like I said, so I've seen poor people with uh, poor people. When I say poor in this video, what I'm including is people that are low income and struggling financial, but financially, but also high income people that spend it all and have little or no net worth. And, you know, let me tell you, there's lots of them. It's extremely common for people to have high income, but almost no net worth because they spend it all. So now wealthy in this video, I mean, I mean so, so there's people, of course, with high income and high assets and lots of investments, and of course, those people are wealthy, but also you can be a lower or regular income, um, but you have quite a bit of investments, okay? So that's how I define them here. It's all about your net worth. So now let's talk about how they're different. So the largest asset for the poor is generally a consumer item, it's just a car or something like that. That's really their most valuable asset. So for middle class, it's the home. Now you've probably heard lots of people say, "Oh yeah, your most, your your largest purchase of your life, or your most your largest person, uh, person of your life is your home." If that's true of you, you're middle class. That's kind of the definition. And for wealthy, the their largest asset is generally their investment portfolio or their business. That's what really makes them. That's where the growth is. That's what makes them wealthy. Okay. Now, their largest debt, of course, the, for the poor, it's, they're often struggling with consumer debt, credit cards and credit lines and car loans and that kind of thing. And that's really their main debt. For the middle class, okay, the biggest debt is normally their house, their mortgage, and they're, you know, trying to pay it off. They try to be debt free before they retire. But for wealthy people, it's usually um, an investment loan or a business loan that's helping them build, you know, helping them to grow their net worth. So, you know, wealthy people tend to have the highest debts. You know, until he died uh, a few years ago, the most indebted Canadian was Ted Rogers, who had, you know, owed billions, but of course was worth billions too. So I think there's a lot of people, a lot of tendency to think that the wealthy don't have any debts, but no, they tend to have the biggest debts. So, and what they're doing is they're taking calculated risks. They didn't run up the debts from spending. That's are all about, you know, investing and growing their net worth and building their business, that kind of thing. Now, how do these different groups, uh, what's their lifestyle like and how do they spend? So um, poor people tend to live beyond their means. So they have a ne negative net worth. Okay, now it could be because their income is too low and they just hardly make any money and they just get barely get by. Or it could be that they spend, uh, they have a high income, but they just spend to, they just spend it all. And you know what, I can tell you, I've seen lots and lots of stories that these are actually so common for people. You know, I've seen people that spend, uh, ran, ran up, um, we had a, what, one client that, that ran up 60,000 worth of debts, mostly trying to buy gifts for friends because she thought that people would only like her if she bought them things. Uh, lots of people that will spend a lot on entertainment. Again, it's trying to it's to it's to create an image to to be out with friends, and you think friends won't like me unless I spend lots of money and go hang out with them all the time. 
and it's also buying all the trendy things, clothes and electronics, and and a lot of it is is about an image. And you know, it's interesting. I've actually I dealt with people that are you know lots of debt, lots of credit card debt. And remember, one client actually showed me. You know that there are special wallets that hold thirty credit cards. Didn't know that. Uh, didn't think it was a valuable thing to know. But you know, we ran into somebody with with lots and lots of debt. And usually, we're actually very creative at coming out of it. Okay, so you make a plan. You either you know hit the most highest rate debts first, or the or you nail the one by one in some priority, or the ones that the free up the most cash. Or often we can refinance, or you can do something, get a big refund, and pay it a bunch of. So there's most usually ways that we have found to help people get out of debt. Okay, but occasionally, but remember one client, there was just no way, didn't make much income, they couldn't qualify for financing, there was just there was no, uh, there was no way out of it. And as I told you, the only thing that you got is equity in your home. Your only and you can't borrow it. Your only choice is to sell the home. And he said to me, "I can't sell the home." I said, "Why not?" He says, "Because then, then people will think I'm in financial trouble." So here he was all worried more about you know how people see him, uh, you know, as opposed to how he actually is. So I see that all the time, and that's you know you can get stuck in that in that consumer debt issue and then never never quite get up. Credit cards, of course, are a disaster there. So now the middle class, they tend to have a reasonable amount of lifestyle and some savings. And they and they try to sort of balance with it. Usually not a ton of savings, but it's kind of a reasonable balance. And then the investments they have a balance of growth and safety. So they're trying to pay off their mortgage and also build up some investments. That's kind of what they what what they do. It's the, it's the balance. And it's the balance you know, they, they try to have that balance. You think, oh, the balance is good, but a balance is why you're in the middle class, right? You're just, you're not poor because you save a certain amount, but you're not doing enough to get, to become among the wealthy. So the wealthy tend to live below their means, whatever it is, whether they're a high income or even low income, they live below their means and that gives them money to save and invest and build up their wealth. So they usually have a reasonable lifestyle, sometimes a very good lifestyle. But, but big focus is up on lots of investing. And it's very common to see people save 30, 50, maybe 70% of their income. It's, so it's a lot of focus on investing. And the wealthy tend to be very optimistic. They're always thinking about, the, you know, the future is going to be good. You know, we're going to save. We're grow, everything's growing. Everything's getting better. And they're focusing on building up their net worth. That's, you know, they live a decent life, but, you know, reasonably comfortable life. But all the focus is on is on growing your net worth. So now when it comes to investments, so the poor generally generally have no investments because they're struggling with debt. And you know, this whole power of compound interest, it works against them because they have the debt, they don't have the investments. So middle class, they tend to have a balance of growth and safety. Again, so they'll often buy, you know, a balance fund, some stocks, some bonds, some cash. And you know, you can't really get a big future that way, but that's kind of where they are. And the, the wealthy of them, they're focused on long-term growth. So they usually have stock market equity type investments or they have their money in their business and that's what's growing. And the compound interest really works for them because they've got all these investments that they compound over time. So that's how they really build up a lot of worth, a lot of net worth. Now the retirement plan, we've created retirement plans for all of them. So the poor people, of course, they're basically gonna depend on the government. Okay, that means you're not starving in retirement. But, you know, you're probably not living the lifestyle that you want. It's usually, uh, you know, usually pretty tight. So for the middle class, they usually have investments, but not nearly enough. And, you know, we do retirement plans for people where we start out by, by defining the retirement that they want. When do they want to retire? What's the, specifically the lifestyle they want? Then we look at what they're doing. And most people are just way, way behind. What they're doing isn't going to be anywhere close to getting them the, enough. And that's when you really start to make a plan. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, let's start thinking it through and see how we can maximize things and what, what it needs to get to uh, to the goal we want, or and can we actually do it? So now, so the big problem I have with a lot of the middle class is because they're in this balanced mode, you know, some growth and some investment, they tend to balance investment with the stocks and bonds. And the truth is, um, I've shown this on other videos, you cannot retire comfortably with a balanced portfolio. So if you get a, a you know a portfolio of you know sixty percent stocks, forty percent bonds, or something like that, long term return maybe five percent a year, it's actually uh, virtually impossible. You probably have to save half of your before tax income 
to be able to retire comfortably that way. So it's, and that's generally why the middle class have a reasonable amount of investment, so it's not nearly enough. So when they retire, there's still quite a bit depending on the government, and they usually have to cut back their lifestyle quite a lot from when they're working. They maybe have a reasonable lifestyle while they're working, but then they have to cut back quite, quite a bit after they retire. So now the wealthy tend to retire comfortably, and I say comfortably, it's how they define it. Remember, we've got the fire community that often are uh, living more frugal lives, and they they uh, want more time freedom, and they will define a more frugal retirement, but they can get it earlier, that kind of thing. And for the for the wealthier people, it's you know it's to retire very comfortably, and usually it's the same lifestyle or even higher than they had during their uh, what they had while they were working. It's kind of that lifestyle. Plus, they have more money for travel and entertainment and really enjoy themselves. So it's, it's uh, wealthy are usually in that kind of position. So um, And their investments tend to be stock market equity that are growing. Again, they're focused on the long-term growth, and that's what's going to get them there. And, you know, in the retirement plan, usually, su surprisingly, 70 to 80% of your retirement income is growth that you get from your investments after you retire. So they stay, a big thing about the wealthy is they tend to stay invested effectively all the way through the retirement. And that's what funds their plan. So now talking about a mindset. So a lot of, of, of what you get there is it's it's not just how much money you have, it's what you do with it. And when you talk to personal coaches, so like my wife was a, Anne was a personal coach, or I guess is a personal coach. Uh, and But I talked to lots of personal coaches and these are kind of, the view of the mindset that tends to make you poor. And poor people tend to be pessimistic about the world. The world's getting worse and we're trying to hang on, you know, and you tend to think things aren't gonna change. You have to struggle to stay where you are. And a lot of times they're just living paycheck to paycheck. You know, like they say, it's the average Canadian is two paychecks from bankruptcy. And there's often a lot, it's a lot of fear based, a lot of fear. And the, the idea is if you're just barely getting by, then one major expense, one big thing going wrong, you know, and you have no way to recover from it. So that's, you know, that's really, a, that can be a really, really big issue there. So that's why they tend to be risk averse. Okay. But they also may take big gambles. What I often see with, with poor people is they don't want to do sensible equity, stock market investments kind of thing. They want to buy something super risky, you know, lottery or crypto or something. They would need to make a big gamble because they're not saving enough for it to grow anywhere. So the only way to do it is, is a huge, you know, take a huge gamble on something that's their only chance to be uh, to be comfortable. They tend to think short term. They're just trying to get by, you know, instant gratification and, and they, you know, ideas to move ahead tend, you know, to tend to see obstacle, uh, obstacles to it and not move forward from it. And I see often they tend to be skeptical, like not trusting of other people. They tend to, to you know, get maybe some free advice from friends, but they tend not to pay for advice or want to get advice. And that's often, you know, what kind of sticks them in, keeps them where they are. And, you know, when they do get advice, often it's, you know, it's hard to, you know, accept blame themselves. It's very easy to, you know, criticize, condemn, complain other about against other people you know, try to blame your situation on someone else. So, and you know, for poor, money is more important than time. They have lots of time, not much money. And so what can they do? So now this is what a wealthy mindset is. So first of all, wealthy people tend to be self-made almost always. So it's, it's very rare that you, that it's not that often that people inherit a lot of wealth. Even in Forbes 400 richest people, I went through them once to see what percentage of them actually inherited it and what percentage made it themselves. And the number was 13% inherited, 87% made it themselves. So even the million, the multimillionaires and the billionaires, they start out as middle-class people and they make it all themselves. And that is possible, you know, in this, in this, uh, you know, in this world that we live here with the, uh, you know, free enterprise and capitalism is all possible. So, and so the wealthy mindset is optimistic. You're building growth. You're all trying to create something, create something valuable for your, uh, you know, for your business or whatever occupation you do or however you live your life. You're trying to create a, you know, a family or a good, and you're always a good situation. You're trying to make the world better all the time. Uh, they tend to be very growth focused, thinking down the road of how are things that are going to get, you know, they compound over time. So we, 
the investments we make today are all going to be much bigger down the road, whether it's financial or emotional or whatever, with other people, friendships, everything you invest in all tends to grow. And that's kind of the focus that they have. And they're always thinking about um, the results, what I do and how, how it results again. Um, now, there is a feeling of abundance. And this is kind of interesting because I think um, for people that are poor, there tends to be a us against them and someone's trying to get money from me and all that. And um, wealthy people tend to have this abundance thing. You know, there's more than enough money for everybody. And um, so when it's not fighting against them, other people can help. We can help other people if they can help you. And actually, you know, interestingly, I found that out from, you know, years ago, starting out in blogging. I thought that I knew something valuable as a financial planner. At first, I was, you know, didn't want to share too much of it. And then I finally kind of realized this, you know, it's, it seems that the more you give away for free, the better off you do. So especially this is, I found this true in blogging. It's, it's you know, I think there's some people that blog and they always hold back uh, a few pieces of valuable information so that people can think it's a good idea, but kind of have to go, go to them. And I found, you know what? It's better just let's put all the valuable information out there because, you know, people uh, that way, it can actually um, help other people. And some of them will come to me. And the ones that do are people that genuinely want to work with me and the ones and the ones that, that don't, they've learned from it. And maybe I've helped, helped lots of people that, you know, aren't clients of ours. So, but it's that feeling of abundance. I'm not, I'm not worried about not having enough. I'm worried about, I just want, I'm trying to make a difference in the world. So it's that kind of abundance feeling. So, and, you know, wealthy people tend to be trusting. Like usually often they have, you know, businesses or major careers and they have to trust, they have to work with a lot of people. And um, so you, you tend to be trusting of, you know, well, you know, learn how to, learn it's an important skill to learn who you can trust but you know if trying to trust people get advice from the right people work with the right people have the right people help you that's always a big thing so a big thing about the wealthy mindset is to always you're trying to learn you're always learning so and they realize they don't know everything they're trying to get quality advice and so they're often they're reading all the time watching educational videos and uh, you know trying out new experiences and and, um, you know, talking to lots of people and you're always trying to learn something because there's always more that you can do or more that you can learn. So um, it just tends to be a long term thinking for growth and they're willing to take calculated risk and then we see the opportunity of something. So it's not that they, don't, they see the obstacle, they see the, op the opportunity. Of course, you have to calculate what risks are worth taking and not, but they're willing to take risks if they think they were worthwhile. They tend to, you know, don't take all the pray all the um uh, uh, view of success on themselves. They tend to recognize when other people have helped them. And, you know, wealthy people tend to have, um, they, they uh, for them, time is more important than money. Often they have enough money, but there's, you know, there's only so much time. So time becomes more important. And this often changes what you do. You're willing to, you know, for example, pay people to do things for you that they, that, that they can if it saves you time. Now, so how can you become one of the wealthy if you want to do that? And you know what, you can, uh, this is kind of all up to you. You can change your life. So the first thing is you need to spend less than you make. That is just a, a really critical thing. Uh, whatever it is that you make, you need to spend less than it. So you've got something that you can start to build up. Of course, it's easier if you have a higher income, but you know, lots of people in the fire community have modest incomes and save lots. Uh, you can focus on, you, then you focus on growing your net worth. So putting some money away, think of how can I kind of build this over time? And always be, you know, actively thinking about how to grow this. So, and, you, and your, the investments you should have should all be long-term focused on growth, okay? So you're trying to be conservative with them. You just you need something that's that you're confident that you're that's, that's reliably going to give you a really good growth over the long-term. That, that's the kind of investment that you want. Uh, for wealthy, it's very common to leverage. So they're borrowing money to invest, borrow to, to invest in their business, borrow to invest in their in their investments. And, you know, um, they call it other people's money. You know, it's, you're investing other people's money. It's a good way if you can calculate the risk and it's worthwhile for you. But it's, you know, it's, it's really the number one wealth building tool. You only have so much money yourself when you're young. If you borrow a lot of money to invest and it grows, that's really how to build up wealth fast. So, and they tend to have a financial plan. So you need to, like, 
live with a purpose because you're a financial plan, you're setting your specific goal and now you know what your goal is and exactly what you have to do and you have a plan and you know the plan is actually, you've got a plan that if, if it goes and expect it will actually get to the goals that you want and it becomes important to you. So you you know, you actually do it this way. So, and you know, a big thing about a venture plan is it changes your thinking to long term. Instead of just thinking, what am I doing today? And am I going to be better off next week? Or, you know what I mean? It's a short term. When you have a plan, when you find your plan, now all of a sudden you're thinking long term. This is, you know, I've defined where I want to be. I know what I have to do. And I, and I know what I have to do, all the steps and what I have to do every year to get there. And it just changes your thinking. And that's one of the biggest advantages of having a financial plan is that, that long-term thinking. And you know what? You can learn to think like the wealthy, you know, and then you can become one of them. Now, how do you think like the wealthy? So the big thing is, uh, so they tend to be very opti optimistic. And you know what? Optimism is the only realist realism. You may not know that people that are pessimistic and, you know, there's a tendency to think that people that are pessimistic are more realistic. But, you know, it's not actually true. If you look at the life's, lifestyles, the lives of human beings, especially here in North America, compared to 100 years ago, our lives are vastly better in essentially every other way. We live longer, we're healthier, we're richer, we have better entertainment. Like everything is everything is far better. And, you know, it looks like the next 100 years from now, it's going to be the same. Our lives, again, are going to be way better. So it's that optimism is is what it's what can carry you through life. So it's it's actually a big, very big part of thinking like the wealthy. So and you know that so part of thinking like the wealthy is think long term. Always don't think of just what's happening now. Think the actions that I do now. How are how is this going to you know what's going to happen you know way down the road from doing these? And there are risks you have to take. You know there is a you can uh, risk tolerance that um, being able to take risks is a really important lifestyle, right? Life skill, and you can learn it. You know, you need to calculate what risks what risks you take. But people who don't have you know much of a tolerance to risk anything generally can never become that wealthy. So again, life is learning for them. It's always learning reading, uh, talking to people, like learning from other people. It's it's uh, educational videos, everything you can do to learn. And, and, and often it's, it's you have ideas, you try them. And if you try them, then what will happen is you will either succeed or you will learn, right? So that's a lot of what you do. Again, you get this feeling of abundance. You know, you find the people that trust you. You're not trying to fight against people. There's more than enough for everybody. And if you, that's, you know, part of the wealthy mindset. And then there's um, what I get from one of my mentors is faith, patience, and discipline, right? So you have the faith that things are going long-term. You've got your patience that you can wait and you've got your plan and you're just following it through. And that's really what kind of gets you there. So now, so what do people with a wealthy mindset do? You know, they have a financial plan. They think long-term, learn the skill of a higher risk tolerance. They leverage, which means they borrow to invest or have other things that are not their own effort achieve their goal. And they have this faith, patience, and dis discipline. So that's what they do, actually. So Now, how can this benefit you? Like, so I think some people just think, well, it's just money. You know, it's, 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 is money really meaningful in my life? How does it really, really affect you? And, you know, a wealthy mindset affects you more than you were thinking. First of all, it's not just a little more money. It's a lot more money. And it's this power of compounding is, you know, Albert Einstein called it the uh, fifth wonder of the world, no, the eighth wonder of the world. Um, but, you know, here's one example, a thousand a month for 30 years at 8% is 1.4 million. And you think, well, you know, it's, that makes you a millionaire, a thousand a month for 30 years. And it's just, comp you know, whenever you grow, anything that's growing, it's, it's this exponential growth curve, you know, and um, that's really the way to get wealthy. It takes some time and just something steady and just letting it build up. But it's amazing how that can build up. Uh, I have a story in my blog about Joe versus Joe and Rich. And this is just an example of, you know, the conventional methods are what most people do and in all different areas of finances related to their life. And if you do every single one of them focusing on the maximum wealth building method, I call it the Rempel Maximum. That's the kind of, it's more of a, 
uh, outlook on life than a specific, there is a specific strategy, but it's more of an outlook on life and a specific strategy, but it can be massive, the difference on it. And this story is of two twins that were in the same situation, but just did things differently and how much difference it can make. So the other ways that wealthy mindset have benefits you is just a sense of confidence. You know, you build up some wealth and now you've actually got this feeling of confidence. So it's not the money itself. It's what it does for you. It does, you know, for your family and for you in, in your life. And I call it millionaire next door conf confidence. You know, most millionaires are not in big mansions with fancy cars. Most of them live in regular neighborhoods with regular cars. Most of the people don't even know that they're wealthy. And yet they have this quiet confidence because, you know, they have this huge portfolio. That's kind of their security. And they can know they can do whatever they want in life. And if so, there's a kind of it's not a fear base. There's this quiet confidence that they have. So and um, so one of the things we do in our in our process of creating a financial plan is we try to find what what's important about money to you what are your money what's your values related to money and the two most common are security and freedom and when you become wealthy you get those you get this you know financial independence you know you know you have enough money that you're secure right so even if if you decide for example not to work or something goes wrong in your life you know you always have choices you can just you, you're financially independent and you've got this freedom Freedom to live the way you want. You've got choices in your life. If you've got lots of money, you've got a wealth, you can do anything that you think is wealthy. You can help other people. You can travel. You can enjoy life. You can work hard or not work hard. You can do that. You can work, do only the work that you find meaningful or fun. And it just gives you that freedom. And then, of course, you can, you know, retire whenever you want in the way you want. And that gives you that, you know, time freedom. So it's, it's freedom of choices of how you live and how you spend your money and also time freedom. And so th those are the benefits that you get from being wealthy. It's not just about the money itself. So, all right. So what we've learned is um, poor, middle class and wealthy, which one are you? Now you know how to define them. And we've learned how the different groups are different. And also we've talked about what you can do to move up to a different group if that's what you want to do. All right, so my, my name is Ed Rempel. My blog is Unconventional Wisdom. It's actually the number one blog in Canada for a financial planner. And there's the link to it here, edrempel.com. And if you go to contact on the uh, on the, 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 the blog, you can get a free, you can ask for a free 30 minute consultation. If you're, if you're thinking of working with us, but you're not sure, does that actually work? Is it, is it, is it, are you in the right part of your life? Does it make sense for us to work together? Just ask for a free 30 minute consultation and you can find out. So also please like and subscribe to both my blog and my YouTube channel. Um, if you do that, all that you'll get is you'll get um, you'll get all of my new videos and articles sent directly to your email when they come out. All right. Thanks again for listening and talk to you next week.